This video is intended for training purposes. Healthcare facilities should evaluate procedures based on available equipment and staff. It is imperative that all protocols be tested and practiced while wearing personal protective equipment to ensure applicability and team readiness. Peripheral IV Insertion Guidance for peripheral IV insertion in patients with Ebola or other special pathogen. In this video, we identify the special considerations needed for the insertion and removal of a peripheral IV from a patient confirmed or suspected to be infected with Ebola or other special pathogen. When performing a peripheral IV or PIV procedure, it is important to follow all institutional policies and procedures. Only healthcare workers that have received training per their institutional policy and demonstrated competency should be allowed to perform a peripheral IV procedure on a patient suspected or confirmed to be infected with Ebola or other special pathogen. Healthcare workers training for a PIV procedure should practice using the supplies and equipment available at their institution. Protocols should be developed that will facilitate the PIV procedure while mitigating risk to the healthcare worker. Prior to the procedure, review institutional protocol with all care team members and discuss the plan of action. Healthcare workers performing a PIV procedure will be donned in the appropriate level of personal protective equipment, or PPE, as required by CDC guidelines and institutional protocol. Assess if the patient would be better served by more definitive access, like a central venous catheter or peripheral inserted central catheter, to facilitate phlebotomy and deliver intravenous medications. If the patient requires urgent administration of medication or fluids, like correction of coagulopathy, a PIV may be necessary prior to inserting a central venous catheter. Throughout the procedure, Donned personal protective equipment may be uncomfortable and restrictive. This will result in decreased dexterity, decreased tactile sensation, and distorted vision. For this reason, healthcare workers are urged to work cautiously, being mindful of their limitations. Prior training in the processes of inserting peripheral IVs and drawing labs while wearing PPE is essential. This will allow healthcare workers to experience firsthand the challenges they will encounter during a live procedure. Communication with team members is an example of one such challenge. During a procedure, PPE can be noisy and muffle sounds making communication difficult. Healthcare workers will need to speak in a loud, clear tone and use closed-loop communication, asking coworkers to repeat their response to verify understanding. The equipment and supplies used for peripheral IV placement and lab collection will differ between institutions. It is advised that all sharps have safety features and that institutions follow the requirements for bloodborne pathogen standards. General supplies for the peripheral IV procedure include a peripheral IV insertion kit or individual supplies per institutional protocol, absorbent pads, alcohol-based hand rub or disinfectant wipes for hand hygiene per institutional protocol, EPA-approved disinfectant wipes for environmental disinfection, blood collection tubes and blood transfer devices if collecting blood specimens and lab labels, a waste collection bin with an appropriate liner, and a sharps container. If available, a vein visualization device or ultrasound may be helpful. Equipment and supplies for the procedure should be gathered in advance and transported into the room per institutional protocol. Extra or backup supplies should be prepared and made ready to pass into the room if necessary. When placing a peripheral IV, always follow institutional protocol assign roles and discuss the plan of action to ensure staff understand their role in the procedure. For example, determine who will place the PIV and who will observe the procedure. 
Confirm that each member of the care team knows and understands their responsibilities. Provide just-in-time training, if necessary, prior to the procedure. Institutional protocol should define the number of care team members required for the procedure. Patient acuity and clinical condition should be taken into consideration when determining staffing requirements. At minimum, two healthcare workers are recommended, one to insert the PIV and another to act as the observer and assist if necessary. If the patient is a child, it may be helpful to consider diversional activities topical analgesics, or comfort measures prior to the insertion of a peripheral IV. Additionally, consider having another staff member donned in PPE ready to assist if the patient is a child or is uncooperative, as these patients could potentially require additional assistance. Inform all care team members that the procedure is taking place to ensure all team members are ready and prepared. For example, when preparing to collect laboratory specimens, communications with laboratorians and others essential to the process should occur to ensure that the lab orders are received, laboratory equipment is prepared, and appropriate collection tubes and transfer devices are present for the procedure. Informing the lab of the approximate time that a lab draw will occur allows them to make the appropriate preparations to analyze the samples. As the provider approaches the patient to perform the procedure, they must be mindful of the surroundings and areas for potential contamination. They should clean and disinfect surfaces they will come in contact with, such as the bed rails and bedside table. Place waste in sharps containers close to the working area to minimize the need for movement once the procedure has started. If institutional policy requires that sharps containers be fixed to the wall, consider using a rigid container to transport sharps to the sharps container. Additionally, for safety and comfort, healthcare workers should adjust the bed to an appropriate height for the procedure. Providers must also be mindful of the potential contamination risks they may encounter as they approach a PIV procedure. These risks include PPE contamination, potential exposure to infected bodily fluids, and equipment that needs to be removed from the working area. Barriers can be used to mitigate risks during the procedure. For instance, use strategically placed absorbent pads to protect the bed linens from exposure to any blood spills beneath the patient's arm. Place another absorbent pad barrier on the disinfected bedside table to hold supplies and prevent the table from becoming contaminated before, during, and after the procedure. Absorbent pads or disposable aprons can also be utilized as a barrier between the provider and the bed. As with any procedure, always ensure institutional protocols are followed at all times. We will now demonstrate the peripheral IV insertion process for a patient confirmed or suspected to be infected with Ebola or other special pathogen. As the provider approaches the patient, they will use a bedside table to prepare all supplies. Begin by cleaning and disinfecting the table with EPA-approved disinfectant wipes. It is important to ensure that the disinfectant is allowed the manufacturer's recommended contact time. Once the table is dry, a clean absorbent pad is placed on the table with the absorbent side facing up. This will prevent any potential fluids from contaminating the table. Next, lay out the required equipment and supplies in a manner that will facilitate the procedure. Perform hand hygiene often, always after touching a potentially contaminated item such as the bed or linens. Ensure alcohol-based hand sanitizer is placed in a location that is easily accessible. Place the waste in sharps containers close to the work area to help facilitate the safe disposal of items used during the procedure. Be mindful not to place the containers in a location where they may become a tripping hazard. As previously mentioned, if your institution requires sharps containers to remain locked in wall enclosures, you can increase safety by using a rigid container to transport sharps 
to the Sharps container. Once all equipment is prepared and an observer is present, prepare the patient by placing an absorbent pad underneath the arm where the peripheral IV will be inserted. This will absorb blood that flows from the insertion site, preventing it from reaching the bed linens, making cleanup safer and easier. Begin placement of the peripheral IV following institutional policy. Throughout the procedure, healthcare workers must be mindful of their PPE and work cautiously. When applying the patient's tourniquet, healthcare workers must be careful not to let their gloves be caught, as this may lead to a breach if the glove tears. Once the provider palpates and selects the appropriate vein, they will need to anchor the vein to prepare for the needle insertion. This needle insertion process needs to be performed in a manner that will not introduce the risk for needle stick injury. Rather than anchoring the vein with the thumb below and forefinger above the insertion site, grip the patient's arm from underneath the insertion site and pull the skin firmly to anchor the vein. This will allow you to anchor the vein while keeping your hand and fingers away from the needle. At no time should you palpate the vein in front of the needle. Once the vein has been accessed, advance the cannula into the vein, then activate the safety mechanism prior to removing the needle from the cannula. Then place the device in the Sharps container. If the device you use does not have a safety mechanism, withdraw the needle carefully and place it immediately in the Sharps container or the rigid container if unable to reach the Sharps container. To remove the IV, Healthcare workers should follow institutional policy, taking measures to ensure they do not contact contaminated surfaces or bodily fluids from the patient. Prepare the patient by placing an absorbent pad under the arm where the peripheral IV will be removed. This will absorb blood that flows from the insertion site and prevent it from reaching the bed linens. Place a gauze pad over the insertion site as the catheter is removed to absorb blood and prevent splash from the catheter. Keep the gauze pad on the insertion site while the catheter is placed into the Sharps container. Discard the gauze pad in the waste container and place a new dressing on the insertion site. Check gloves for gross contamination. If there is visible contamination on the gloves, wipe with a disinfectant wipe. Perform hand hygiene on the top layer of gloves, then remove and discard into the waste container. Perform hand hygiene and replace the outer gloves with a clean pair. After the procedure is complete, clean and disinfect the area with an EPA-approved disinfectant following institutional protocol. Additional resources are available at the NETEC and CDC websites. If you have any questions, please contact NETEC directly at info at Thank you.